Hey guys, it's Michael. Um, welcome back again. This is Matthew, my nephew. Most of you met him. Uh, we just did a little show. We made some stuffed croissants for breakfast today. Um, there was stuff English. for the Western Omelette, and they came out perfect, beautiful. But this is Matthew, uh, an inspiration behind my cooking. Comes up with great ideas, and I help him put them together. He's not yes. that talented at that that stage yet, but he likes a lot of foods. He knows a lot of good flavors. He's got a lot of great ideas. Today, what we're gonna do is okay. You, okay. Help, no, no, wait, wait, come back here. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a steak. We had a, 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 a chuck roast today in the in the refrigerator so we're going to use what we got and what we're going to do is we're going to make a roulade like we're going to stuff it with all kinds of cheeses and everything and we're going to make a roulade and then we're going to make a ranch potato we figured I mean I think this you know people do know about this but we're just going to make it because I think it'll complement that steak very nicely and uh, with what it's going to be stuffed with and then we're going to make a fresh asparagus and um, so and Matthew's idea here was today to take the steak. Now he, what we want to do is we wanted to cut it thin. So come around this side, please. So we wanted to cut it thin. So we took this roast that we had and we cut it this way. Now we can make two roulades out of this for what we want to do. So we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side, and we're going to take this section and we're going to make the first one. No, come on. And we're going to make the first one. So now Matthew's vision is here. What we're going to do is we're going to take some cream cheese and we're going to put it in. And I think it calls for a block, Matthew. So let's try with a block because we want okay. it thick. We want it good, right? Yes, we do want a nice so, amount of cream yeah, cheese yeah, on yeah. it. So we're going to take it and we're going to more or less just Smother smooth it. it around in here. Now, I didn't season the inside of the steak, and you'll see why in a second, because we're going to go ahead and we're going to put all those flavors, d a little bit different flavor towards the outside of the steak, so it all incorporates together. But um, we'll just take this and just just try to get this, you know, as close as edge to edge as you can. Soften cream cheese. You guys, I use my hands a lot. Um, you could use the spatula, whichever way, but I, I you know, in work and and everything sometimes you know and us being cooks it's easier just to get in there and do it <laughs> just keep the hands clean and you'll be fine and we're working with raw meat so you want to make sure you wash your hands guys so make sure in between everything so just make sure everything's okay so I think that'll be nice right there we're gonna take that like that okay Matthew how does this look where'd he go we got it almost it to the wonderful. edge, right? Okay, looks good. almost to the edge. Yeah, you want it yeah. all the way to the edge throughout yep, the middle, like you can. Yep, you're yep. like icing it off the cake. Right. Okay. Now I gotta rinse my hands here real quick, and then what we're gonna do? I'm gonna take a little bit of black pepper. Just stay on this, Christian. I'm going to take a little bit of black pepper, and then we're going to take, because we're doing a rosemary today, a, uh, a fresh rosemary, we want that flavor and scallion inside. We think those flavors will be nice together. Matthew thinks they'll be nice together, and that's why I agree with them. And then we thought of the ranch potatoes because... So, so this is some fresh rosemary. I'm sorry, guys. And, uh, you know, you, you know how to work, I'm sure, with fresh rosemary. You pull it off. You pull the leaves off. Try to leave the stalk there. Um, and we're just going to chop it up a little bit. Uh, we don't need too big a pieces. So just a little bit. We're going to cut it up here. And what we're going to do is just take some of this rosemary, put it right in the middle. And that rosemary just smells wonderful too. And we're just going to put a light, nice little coat of it. And then we're going to take some scallion. I use the scallion from top to bottom and I just chopped it in little circles. So, and I'm going to use all the all parts of it here. And we're going to put a little layer of this here. Okay, and I used 
probably for this steak I, I used uh, four uh, scallion cleaned. Okay, and then we're going to roll this. And Matthew, look at, see? I think it's going to be beautiful, man. Look at that. I don't even think we really need to tie it. We were discussing if we needed to tie it or anything like that, but I think we're good to go. So let's see here. Let's take that and put that in our pan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to season this up now. What we're going to do is we're going to take, um, I'll probably drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it because we're going to make a rub, more or less. Just smooth it on there, that way the spices stick nice and everything. And then what we want to do is we want to take some more of this rosemary on the outside. I'm going to take some more of this rosemary on the outside. And then we're going to do a little bit of salt to taste, of course, like everybody knows. A little bit of salt there. Um, Matthew, would you hand me the, the garlic in the, the garlic. On the door, on the door, yeah. Right here. And then I'm going to take a uh, little bit of garlic powder. I'm kind of looking for the garlic on the door. Ask Titi, please. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of garlic. There. And then a um, little bit of black pepper. Did we already do that? I think we did. Uh, if we didn't, we got a little bit more. Oh, no, I put some on the inside. I didn't put any on the outside yet. Okay, a little bit of black pepper there, and then we're going to do, <laughs> okay, thank you, and then we're going to just rub a little bit of fresh chopped garlic mm. on the outside, but you guys notice like I do, like I always do, I put a little bit of the powder only because of the different flavor, and it does have a nice flavor, it's it's more of a roasty flavor, I don't know. I've been using it for so long, the powder, that I just... It, it, it's definitely two different tastes. But we just rubbed a little bit of fresh garlic on the outside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our potatoes. Let me just rinse my hands off again. So that looks good, Matthew. We'll take that out. We're going to take potatoes, and now remember how we did for the Italian potatoes. I did that in Gima's Last Supper. We cut them in, in chunks. So, you know, I do skin on. There's no reason to take the skin off. I mean, it tastes good. It'll be nice and roasty and everything. And try to keep your pieces uniform. Uh, that way they cook uniform. So I cut, you know, I mean, just however you like. You cut as thin as small, but as long as you keep them uniform, they're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and mix them in a bowl today because we're going to put them around this roast. And we're going to let the roast, because if you think about the, the flavor of the cream cheese and rosemary and all that, and the flavor of ranch with the potatoes around it roasting, I think that's going to be amazing. I really do. I think it's going to be amazing. So we're going to drizzle some olive oil on this. I'm going to do a little trick though. We're going to take this ranch, the powdered ranch, and we're going to mix it. So this we're is Uncle Michael's sprinkles. recipe here. Well, and I think that everybody knows of ranch potatoes. I think there's been, you know, um, I think ranch themselves, or, or, you know, name brands have put out these roasted potatoes. Uh, I so just feel, right, I just feel that it was appropriate to do this because the flavors will incorporate. I'm going to use the whole envelope on this. And I just think to do this because the, um, the flavor mixed with the cream cheese and all that that's on the inside. Matthew, you know what? We forgot a very important thing that we were going to do on this roulade. What? The mozzarella? mozzarella cheese inside. You didn't stop me. It's yes. okay. We're going to fix it. We're going to get it together here. <laughs> Let me just get these potatoes mixed up now. I'm going to do a little bit of salt in these. Sounds and good. you don't need much. You and, could go uh, without the mozzarella, but there are choices. Oh, yeah, we don't want use. to, though. And we're just going to mix these up lightly. We're not going to over-mix them because we don't want to take this coating off. We want to make sure these potatoes are coated with the ranch. 
so we don't want to over mix them we want to make sure that there's 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 seasoning on every potato so okay. just lightly toss them in the ranch and you'll see now all these potatoes stuck with all that flavor from the from the potatoes um, okay let's do this okay let me just rinse my hands real quick and we're going uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that mozzarella gets inside of this roast guys yes I can't believe we forgot this we have three cooks all of us knowing what's going in here and they let me but that's like I said we're, we're just experimenting with it with this right now we Envision this. My nephew envisioned this, and I thought it sounded wonderful. So the so, cream cheese is key. Yeah. There are other cheeses you could put with it. Right. I think so too. I think you. But cream it. cheese is the base. So we're just gonna take some mozzarella, and put it inside, and then he also envisioned. Now you could do this with any steak that you know. Get it thin sliced or however thick you like it. We want it to be a roast. But yet we want to be able to still cook our roast medium rare. So we wanted a thicker piece, you know. Yes. We wanted something nice. We didn't want to overcook the roast. And I'm thinking as thick as it is, and it's a nice thickness, that by the time the potatoes are done, the roast will be at the temperature that we want. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and we put the mozzarella cheese in there. And we're going to go ahead and roll that back up again, guys. And I still have all those seasonings on the outside. Sorry about that little flubber, but see, that's why we're a real cooking show here. We're doing it. We're learning. See, and we love the marble fat. If you notice, a lot of our steaks that we do prepare here, um, they do have that. Uh, we do do that. So, um, okay. So there are lean and marble. Yes, yeah, you, so you can choose yeah. your choice. Okay, and we're going to take these potatoes now. And like we said, we feel those flavors are going to be so good with the flavors of the steak, so we're going to put these around. Now, we're doing, uh, this roast, I think, would, would feed four people. That's just one half of that roast that we had that we did this with. And I believe it'll feed four people, and I believe everybody eats a potato a piece, so we got four potatoes here. And you saw the size of them, so they're pretty nice. So we're just going to lay them around. I've got the oven preheating already. I've got it on 400. We're going to try it on 400 because we're gonna, we kind of want to cook it quick, yet, you know, let it have time to brown and everything. So, let's see, these potatoes, and if you notice, guys, the potatoes, they have a nice, nice coating. All of them, are you showing a close-up of that, Christian? All the potatoes have something on them, which is what you want, because what we do, the way I do it, like I showed you in my Italian roasted potatoes in uh, Gima's Last Supper, in the video Gima's Last Supper, is we're not going to touch these potatoes till they start to brown and cook and all that and then we're going to turn them and by that time all those spices are already encrusted on the potatoes and it just oh, makes it so delicious. So we're going to take this now and we're also going to do an asparagus which we love asparagus my whole yeah. family and my father used to love asparagus and but he did not like he liked to taste his asparagus he doesn't want it covered with anything. Matthew wanted a nice Bernays sauce or hollandaise, and I agreed with them. But, um, well, let's just go ahead and put this in the oven real quick. We'll get this started. Okay, and like I said, I got that set of 400 on bake. We'll do that. And then um, the asparagus, I got a low pot, a small pot of water. We're boiling it. I'm just going to put just a little bit of salt. I don't have a steamer here at this house. Um to steam the vegetables because I firmly believe in steaming as much as you can to retain you know but I want to salt this because I don't want to salt the, uh, the, the the asparagus will get the flavor, it'll enhance the flavor, it'll, it'll bring it out a little bit better instead of putting salt on at the end because they're going to be lightly tossed in the garlic and olive oil and that's it and that's my father's recipe for asparagus why are you going to hide the flavor and put a sauce over asparagus uh, when I when I cook professionally, I'm a soup and saucier. I love to create soups and sauces and everything. So I love to make the sauces, and I and I like to put sauces on my foods. But I got Matthew cooking. He reminds me of father, and it reminds me of the asparagus, and I think that'll go nice on the side of that. So I'm just gonna let this water come to a, a roll and boil. It should be quick. I had it on a roll and boil earlier, um, and then I'm gonna put the asparagus in. And once it is just lightly tender, 
Um, then we're going to take it out and we're going to cool it off a little bit and then we're going to toss it in that, that and we're going to use again my powdered garlic and we're going to brown that powder just to the point of brown and then we're going to toss the asparagus in and it's done it's delicious so let's go ahead and put this in the pot because that water was rolling boiled just a little bit earlier and we don't want it to boil we want it just to simmer here shortly and I use the whole asparagus if you try to cut it up what happens is someone's going to get stuck with lots of the end pieces someone's stuck with lots of the, the the softer pieces so we do it this way and everybody gets some of everything and it's just delicious that way so let's go ahead and cover that and um, we I'm thinking the roast with the potatoes and all is probably going to take about 40 minutes so um, we'll check in on the oven here in just a second so we're going to take a short pause and then we're going to show you we had another great idea or Matthew had another great idea we're going to show you we have a cinnamon roll um, uh, we found a caramel cinnamon roll uh, just any canned cinnamon roll and we're gonna take it and take it out of the can unroll it fill it with apple pie filling roll it back up and make cinnamon rolls filled with apple pie filling with the icing on top and we're gonna show you that and that's gonna be our dessert today and that would also make a nice breakfast also or brunch so uh, see you in a sec okay everyone it's been about 20 minutes since we've had this in the oven so we're going to go ahead and we're going to check and see how we're coming because I think about 40 minutes. But you know what guys, I think we might not even look at that long. I'm going to move these potatoes around just a little bit. The steak is coming nicely and I think we'll still get our rare medium rare center like we want. But the potatoes I'm just going to move around just a little bit just to get maybe some of the underside. And it is looking delish. Delish. I think it's going to be beautiful, Matthew, just like you envisioned. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and look at it's getting some of the juices from the steak on those potatoes. So oh. those potatoes are going to be extra special, man. So they're not just your basic ranch potatoes. You see, guys, we brought you a special little twist. <laughs> Cook them with a roast and change the flavor. Okay, let's put this back in and finish it off. Shouldn't be much longer, guys. Okay, what I'm going to do now is, since we're so close, I believe that, that, um, that, the, that the roast is done. I, I believe that I don't want to overcook it. The potatoes do need a little bit more cooking, but our roast needs to rest for a couple of minutes anyway. So what I'm going to do is take it out of the pan, and I'm going to... Um, will you hold this right there? Make sure you see those. Nice. So I'm going to take it out of the pan and I'm going to put it on a plate and I'm going to let it um, sit for a minute. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so beautiful. Oh, look at all of that. And we got some of that gooey goodness here from the steak. Let me just go ahead and take that out real quick and put it to the side. Okay, I know I want to lick my fingers, but I know better. And I'm just going to spread out these potatoes. And while that roast, uh, these potatoes are almost ready, I just want them a little more brown. So while that roast is standing for a second, just to chill, so when we cut, not to chill, but just to cool, when we cut it, I'm going to put these back in the oven and let them finish off. And what we'll do is, um, I'll be back in a sec, guys. We're going to let that cool for a sec. Okay. Okay, guys, and what we did with the asparagus, now remember, we went ahead and we we, uh, we cooked it. It's just at the tender point, it's still a little bit consistency to it, but we don't want our asparagus all mushy and everything. So I'm going to take it out of this pan here for a second. And then over next to it, I have... Um, I have some olive oil in a pan. I have the olive oil getting hot. So there's that asparagus right there. I have the olive oil in the pan getting hot. And what I'm going to do right to the olive oil is add just a little tiny is add just a little tiny bit of salt. Little tiny bit of black pepper. And then we're going to add Lots of garlic powder. 
to taste. Actually, I'd say about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more, and that was about three tablespoons of olive oil because we want it to coat. Now, I'm just putting some garlic in there because that's the flavor that this asparagus is going to have. Now, what I want to do is I want to brown this garlic just a little bit. I need a little bit more. I want it to brown. And again, like I said, I'm using the powder. It's just something with the flavor. I grew up with it just... It, it, it's delicious. I just don't know what to tell you guys. It's something, you know, I have a, I guess I have a taste for. And I love fresh garlic, and you'll see I'll cook with fresh garlic in the future. It's just that, you know, this is my dad's recipe. I don't want to change it because I love it the way it is. And I like the powdered garlic. I like the flavor. I just want to get this hot enough just to brown the garlic because that little brown flavor on powdered garlic is what I'm looking for. The little, a little roasted flavor. So I'm going to brown it up just a little bit. And yes, I do have it on a little higher heat, but please, whatever you feel comfortable with, okay guys? So, and there it is starting to brown up some. Okay. And we don't want to burn it, we just want to brown it. So if you look now and look a little closer, you'll see it's starting to brown. And once you get to that brown consistency right there, there we go. Then I'm going to throw this asparagus in. And you hear it sizzle, and we're just going to take it, and we're going to coat all of these asparagus with that brown garlic. And that's it. I'm going to turn it off. It's already brown. The asparagus is already hot. The asparagus is already cooked. So that's it on that. It's ready to go. Potatoes are done here. Let's see. Nice and brown. I didn't get any of my special treats today. I remember, if you remember Gma's Last Supper, my special treats are the burnt ones, the ones that are a little bit smaller. But I wasn't lucky enough to. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this steak and cut it probably in half inch pieces with all that gooey gooey goodness inside the middle there. We'll take a few of these and lay them on the plate. Matthew, it looks delicious, Matthew. I'm going to take this cheese and just put it on the side for her because you want that cheese. That's hers. I just want to lick my fingers, guys. Sorry, it looks so good. Going to take a few of the potatoes, the ranch roasted potatoes, and put them on the side. Oh my Lord. There. And then we're going to come back. I'll bake it for dinner at my house. I got to get used to making it. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to. Um, I don't have a pan for it though. Get some asparagus. Hang on, I'm getting a fork, guys. And we're going to get some of these asparagus right here. And we'll probably give her four or five or six of them. And now check out that plate, guys. And that's Matthew's. You know, the cheese, we let that sit. I, I'm kind of in a little rush today. That's why I can't bring you that apple cut or the apple buns that I promised you. But I promise you it'll be in there by the next day. We'll get that done for you and, and send it in on a separate video. No so there we go with Matthew's vision. The uh, roulade beef stuffed with cheese, ranch roasted potatoes, and my father's famous um, asparagus yeah, in, in no. In roasted garlic. They spray the delish, delish, squat. delish. And uh, thanks, Matthew, for everything. All right, buddy? And, and everything looks good. And thank we'll, you, thank we'll you. invite you back, and we'll do another show. Okay? Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again. See you later. Bye.